Alright, so just for the hell of it, I figured I'd do a balancing and capacity test off this uh, old car battery I got from my dad while I'm doing some work with my solar panels and got it balancing now, just put it on using pretty it's not drawing too much current, it's pretty full so I'm gonna let it sit for an hour and it's not a load tester it's gonna be interesting to see what this battery does because I know it's been abused quite a lot but uh, it is a sealed battery it is a very cheap battery from a low price store but it could still be in reasonable condition I don't think it's very old, it could be from 2008 or so I think it's a 68 amp hour battery when it was new so if it's at anywhere near that it could do be a good addition to the battery bank and there we go, we just turn the the current limit down to zero, turning the balance, putting it into the balancing operation after maybe two and a half hours. It's a pretty long time to balance a sealed battery, but uh, I know this battery has been sitting kind of empty. It's been pretty much a pretty abused tree I've did its life, so I think it will do it more good than bad to get a very thorough balancing and overcharge done and it seems to be holding up the voltage pretty good sitting at 13.7 volts still after being disconnected for a number of seconds coffee's done yeah anyway now I've just got to dig the load out and give it a bit of a run. Now I'll just do the thing we should never do, which is to have banana plugs. <laughs> Loose banana plugs hooked up to a car battery. Plug them in there. Nice and easy. And press the go button. Dropping pretty fast. Let's see where it stabilizes. It shouldn't take too long to reach that stage at this rate. Pretty high internal resistance on this thing. Yeah, probably gonna stick somewhere around 12.2, 12.15 or so. Wonder if it'll manage to actually push the voltage back up as a healthy battery should do. Come on. Uh, looks like it isn't planning on doing that. Pretty close though. And that'll be the end of that test. Twenty amp hours. Voltage going steadily up, so gonna let this stabilize, put it in my chart and uh, charge it back up again. Battery's a bit warm even. It's got such a high internal resistance. Anyway, with a bit of luck, I can get this capacity up just a little bit by cycling it again. At least I hope so. Alright, so batteries has been uh, charging overnight for maybe 12, 30 hours or so, and it's been equalizing again for the last one and a half hours or so. And uh, it's using a bit less current today than it did yesterday, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do another discharge capacity test. Voltage slowly dropping, as you'd expect. So we'll see what happens when we turn the load on. And start the timer. That looks to be holding up a bit better than it did yesterday. I think it dropped below 13 volts pretty quickly. Granted, it's dropping pretty fast today as well. But I'm gonna let this run now. I'm pretty optimistic that I'm gonna get more than 19 amperes out of it, which is what I got. Yesterday, since it's using, I think it was significant about 
700 milliamps and I took it off the equalizing charge yesterday and now it's using 500 so the cells should be more fully charged this time round and if I'm not mistaken somewhere around this time it was down to 12.2 volts but that could just be my memory acting up anyway we'll find out just got to get let this run okay this is a definite improvement the voltage is actually going back up this time round and since this is such a crappy battery so to speak it's not so very big at all so I think I'm gonna just uh, keep on balancing and cycling this thing until I get two or three cycles when I don't get any capacity improvement at all so it's a, I think it's kind of an idea about how how many cycles it takes for a battery like this which has been pretty abused, it's been stored half empty and overcharged quite a few times in this day and just to get an idea how much work it takes to get that kind of battery back to a stable maximum spec it's obviously never going to be new again but there's going to be a point where it doesn't get any better so let's find out and it appears that we have gained exactly nothing <laughs> so I'm gonna stop that charge it up, balance it, give it another go hmm, so while we didn't really get too much more capacity out of the battery this cycle it's definitely changed characteristics because it recovered to 2.22 volts this time around, whereas it only recovered to 11.912 last time so something's happened so, hmm it's strange that we'd only get 19 amp hours seeing this it's as if uh, it does have more capacity but it's got a higher internal resistance but on the other hand, since the voltage was higher in the beginning that would tell us that it's got a lower internal resistance so something weird is going on perhaps the undercharged cells have improved and the other ones have uh, become worse alright it's uh, charged up again I put it on balancing the moment I got out of bed and uh, it pretty much dropped down to half an amp right away and it's been sitting at 0.45 or very bad for maybe half an hour now so I think this battery is pretty fully charged by now I had it on 13.8 uh, volts maintenance charge overnight and I charged it uh, at 14.7 volts for quite a while before that until the current dropped down to maybe a couple hundred milliamps so this battery should be about as full as it gets now so let's do another cycle and see if we can get something to happen that behavior we, we saw before was quite interesting so I'm very curious to find out what it's going to do now oh, need my timer there we go current shut on, timer starting so let's see how low the voltage is going to drop looks pretty good so far, still way above 13 volts I don't really trust these <laughs> clamps, I've had some pretty, shall we say, hot issues <laughs> there we go, below 13 volts it stabilised at uh, around 12.4 volts the last time, so we should expect to see something above that if it's improved but I'm kind of sceptical that it has and it indeed does seem to be dropping quite fast so maybe the internal resistance isn't going to be a whole lot better this time but perhaps we'll get a bit more capacity out of it I honestly have not the slightest clue about what's going to come out of this cycle it's going to be very interesting to see it's probably going to stabilize somewhere around 12.4 volts this time as well and there we go, it just turned around and 
started going back up so I think it was somewhere around 12.42 the last cycle and now it's 12.45 so that is a bit of a step up a little tiny bit of improvement and we've just got to see how far up it will climb who knows maybe it will climb back up to 12.5 although I kind of doubt that we'll see uh, there we go, it's starting to go back down again. 12.467. That is definitely a bit better than before. So, we do have a marginally better internal resistance now. Marginally. They say that idiocy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And it certainly seems that's what we're doing right now. Let's put this, charge it back up, and cycle it again. Hmm, it's kind of astounding how it can actually maintain such a consistent results, really. It's done 19 amp hours on the spot every time. So, guess that's a good thing. I'll Quote it as a reference battery. Alright, I've balanced it one more time and I've let it sit on maintenance charging for a few hours because I had to do stuff. So let's give this battery another cycle. This might be the last one I bother with because the change we saw last time was pretty small but who knows I might come to the realization that I might want to do another one either way so it's still anyone's game I doubt we'll get more than 19 hours out of it this time either well we do have still a bit higher voltage lower internal resistance over 12.5 volts this time and rising. Mm. So, <laughs> at least something's happening. Words are unnecessary. Alright, so after four cycles, I'm pretty confident this battery will never be more than. 19 amp hours, well 19 and a half was the absolute best number I could get out of it, so I think I'm just gonna turn the equalization charge off and give it a little bit of a quick dab with the load in order to just uh, see how much the voltage drops and maybe take a quick peek of the video I shot back then and Compare how much the voltage drops in the first couple of seconds. Alright, so I just did a quick review of my video footage, and the first cycle when I done the first balancing run on this battery, it dropped to about 12.2 volts in one and a half minutes. So let's see what it does now. I'm pretty confident we'll be way above that. <laughs> It also dropped below 13 volts in just a few seconds. And there we go. Now with the half, one and a half minute mark, after all that work, we're seeing over 12 and a half volts, which is a considerable improvement. This battery could probably crank over a car. I'm gonna stop this. Don't need it anymore. Wow, shot over 12.7 volts and climbing. So, we have seen a considerable improvement in its performance by just, rather just cycling it a few times and balancing it. And uh, I'm fairly impressed by the performance of this battery. I expected it to be uh, going straight to the junk, really. That's where I've been... Uh, cycling it so many times I was expecting it to get worse and worse by every cycle since uh, 
it's just been very abused. But uh, this battery, well, look at that over 13 volts. This battery might actually be usable. Might just throw it into the battery bank. I'm kind of curious as to how it measures up to the my current testing battery which I'm sitting on. Might have to do some cycling on that one as well. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go outside and try and crank over a carb with this thing. Just for the heck of it. Alright, we are now inside my 1990 Volvo 740 with a 2.3 litre petrol engine with almost no compression so it's usually a pretty easy engine to crank over sadly despite being a large car the battery didn't fit inside the hood so it's just jumped in which isn't going to make things easier for it my jumper leads aren't the best ones but uh, anyway I've disconnected the fuel injectors to make things a bit more interesting and I've put my meter in crest mode so no, I'm going to be coming to crest mode, so that we'll see the instantaneous lowest and highest voltage of the battery. Yeah, peak also of 3.41, yeah right. Anyway, here we go. That's pretty good cracking. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Well, this voltage is ten and a half volts, and we're way low at the end of that long jumper cable. Let's put it in live mode again. <laughs> Min max average. I'm not complaining about a battery that'll do this to a car like this. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna burn out my starter. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm just going back up. What was our minimum voltage? Let's see. Minimum. 11 volts. Ha! <laughs> There's probably a, a bit of heat going on there. A lot more heat going on around here. And I don't even want to think about the poor starter. <laughs> so, yeah. I'd say that's a pretty successful restoration, even though we never got more than about 20 amp hours out of it. <laughs> it's a strong battery despite that. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, maybe even learned a thing or two about batteries. I definitely learned some stuff and I got a decent battery out of it. So, better get going. Cheerio!